uh, what what's interesting what I, my feeling about visiting your ex exhibition is that you uh, you are a person of paradox i mean uh, your exhibition is not about your architecture it's more about the space between things for me that's that's correct it's everything it's the liminal space that exists between things so uh, just first could you tell me about the project itself, how it began, and after we speak about this idea of space between things? Sure. So the, this was a conversation that began a few years ago with the artistic director, Hervé Chandes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met, you know, it was immediately after the lockdown. So everything, we, I was to come here in 2020, uh, if I'm correct. And then I was here in 2022 of June, and when we met, I had no idea what, you know, I just came to see him, say hello. And uh, and then he said, you know, I want to do a, a work that uh, is somewhere between silence and tension. Ah, he said so. Yes. Interesting. And so that became, became the sort of the, the seed, if you want to call it that, that was because really- Because he knew your work. Yes, he's seen my work. We've exchanged. I was here in Paris in 2014 for some work. I did a small show here in Paris in a small gallery at that time who is now in, in there in Madrid. But so it was a it was a series of conversations. And I think that was the, the beginning point of uh, the entire journey of making this work uh, at the Fondation. And uh, and so everything that, and then I responded back to him, you know, uh, saying stillness, you know, so silence, tension, stillness, and then a series of these words evolved in our conversation. And that really became the envelope for the show, or mm. the envelope for the work. But for an architect, it's good to show architecture too, no? Where, where aren't you frustrated? What do you mean? I'm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not really architecture here. Well, for me, I don't see architecture as buildings. Interesting. You know. uh, it's between. It's for me. It's everything that's in between things. Uh, the architecture for me exists in between. For me, I, I, and often when I teach, when I, I, I talk to my students, and I say, if, uh, I say, architecture is about making space, not buildings. You know, our, uh, what we do is about space. And uh, so if you, if, if you approach it in that way, then everything that is space comes into the umbrella of what one would call architecture. For me, music, painting, poetry, literature, gardening, all of that is very much part of, uh, of making architecture. And if you have read Vitruvius's book, on architecture where he talks about what it means to be an architect mm -hmm. and so he goes through you know uh, you know all from botany to chemistry to physics and to master that you know to to learn that and uh, uh, so it's kind of more like an ontological exercise for and me. it's also a way not to make jail because architecture can be a box which is like a jail for human being that's one way to see it mm -hmm. you know that's one way to see it but uh, i think it has the potential to be an open space as opposed to be one that is enclosed and uh, and boxed in or, or jail like mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for me it's it's the opportunity of you know of 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 how do i say uh structure you no know, it's spatial structures uh, so they're sort of in a way more like botanical or cellular structures and i see architecture as something more cellular and not necessarily you know glass brick steel more i mean those are just uh, those are just uh, how do i say materials that are required to make things mm -hmm. but that for me is not what constitutes architecture. But, uh, but uh, how to express the space between things? Because the miracle of this exhibition is that you go around and you don't really understand what's going on, but you feel it. 
that's making space <laughs> in your head you mean no because if you say feeling is not in your head feeling is uh, something that is resonating between your head and your body and and everything that coexists within that uh, envelope so it's between the inside and outside or mm -hmm. the outside and inside you know it's sort of reversible so it uh, for me that's really i mean it's 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 interesting that you say that because that is really the only exercise all of this are accoutrements you know or or things to enable that resonance that you just mentioned that you can feel it yes now, what is it that you feel is your presence in a space and i think that's what i understand in how you're referring to you feel it yes it's about bringing presence but less with your brain in fact because in the exhibition one can't really understand who has done what sorry one cannot really understand who has done what exactly uh, it is to bring ambiguity so that we are uh, it's relationships no it's about relationships and uh, a certain sense of anonymity we oui. which enables the possibility of your presence in a space so you're not you know it's the the whole exercise is to re so my hope was that once you walked in and when you leave you're not the same again something has shifted something has moved is it going to occur now maybe two years from now maybe you know 30 years from now so it's not really it's not bound in time and this idea of how we how things you know it's osmosis not things enter through our skin mm -hmm. through our sense of smell through our sense of taste through our sense of touch so it really wants to accommodate these senses and more importantly for me what is when we talk about presence is the sense of being intuitive our intuitive sense because that's what is present most right. And you spoke about anonym, anonymous. Anonymity, yes, I anonymous, mean, yes. So, uh, Studio Mumbai is a structure like what? Can you explain what is Studio Mumbai? So, the best way I can uh, give you a sense of an outline of the structure of Studio Mumbai, there, uh, it's quite fluid as a workspace, you know, of course I'm there present and I have a colleague of mine, she's based out of Chennai. So there are two of us uh, who are, you know, our pedagogy is architecture. And then I have people that I collaborate with, you know, uh, in India, but also outside of my own country in Japan, let's say here in France. And it taps into uh, making things you know and mm. they could they it's could, a fl flexible structure yes i would say it's a it's a fluid malleable agile structure or the hope or the work is to have that as a discipline and the nucleus of is how many persons so we're we're a collection of i would say 25 people ah. yeah that that sort of grows depending on the the, uh, the work to be done uh, but it can change also. Uh, yeah, it's also based cyclically. We were talking a little earlier about, you know, making of things, and it's based on season, based on, uh, uh, based on the cycle of the movement of the monsoon, especially for uh, us here in, in in back in. So it means what during the monsoon? What because a lot of people return back home. To for tend, the monsoon. For because they have to tend their fields, they have to cultivate their fields because we still. An agrarian society even now so they return back to their villages their homes their towns and they come from different parts of india mm. but likewise the same i would say whether uh, when i'm working in, when i was working in japan it's the same you know there's a rhythm to things or likewise why go that far even paris has its own rhythm yes yeah, for sure you know? even for food we have our reason exactly so the the uh, what's important is to tune into this rhythm 
and find an optimized way of working in a flow which is based on that rhythm. For so, harmony? F uh, what, what word would you use? For, I would say for, a, uh, for some kind of equilibrium. You know, this idea of the energy and the time and the posture. So I'm, I've been thinking a lot more recently, you know, especially after making this show. And, uh, the, and we were talking about, you know, noise and space and things like that. Uh, what I'm observing is that it's, it's more a choreography. Mm. Right? It's, it's, it's a sense of movement. But you also belong to a society of consumption. You do furniture, you do buildings. And when a client say, I want this building for next year in October. And suddenly the people who are working for you go and uh, cultivate their field. What do you do? I think that has to be accommodated. It's, it's part of, you know, it's, it's, so that's a good, good question, actually. So we are making this winery that I was talking to you a little earlier, not so far away. In, in close South to Avignon, in south of France, in, in uh, near Avignon, and if you recollect, there was this very extreme weather. I think it was last year where it was really, really hot. Yeah. yeah right. And so, they were, you know, so no one could work in the day. So they had to start really early, and then stop because it was so hot that they, they, they and this was not accounted for. It mm. was not accounted for. And then again, they would have to, you know, resume back in the evening. So the workflow took on a different rhythm. But it also meant that there were delays which were not accounted for. So to respond to your question uh, is that uh, how do you make adjustments in a way? Because that's a demand based on, you know, uh, that doesn't accommodate these fluctuations, these nuances of climate, of season, of movement, of war, you know, of a strike, you know. But I was more speaking about Indian rhythm, the, the perception of time in India and the perception of time in France or in America is completely different. I think it's just uh, so, and maybe in this, in the case of the winery, because it, uh, part of the whole nature of the work is based on terroir, no? this movement yeah. of, of a cycle of For time sure. and, and season. Yeah. Uh, I think what you're, you're referring to is one that is of economy, you know, it's based on uh, or the fluctuation of the financial market, which is, doesn't, it's unforgiving, right? It's based on this yeah. is what it is. No this space. is what it is exactly. That's a jail that I how I understand it because there is no space. And so, how do you reply to that? So, to respond to that is to find a dialogue of 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 what what it will take to make something if we want to inhabit it as a space, and to be in that dialogue, saying that there is this trajectory. There is this sense of movement in time, you know, but to say I want it in by October 15th next year, and that becomes a one-way dialogue. So I'm not sure then, uh, yeah. the only way I would engage with it is if I have a gun to my head, right? Because okay. You, so you say, you say it doesn't work with me like that? I. Uh, The way I respond to that is, I'd like to use my time in another kind of way. And so maybe there is no meeting point. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not saying that I don't want to do the work, but if there is no reasonable dialogue, right, uh, which, uh, because it's just based on a number and a, and a numerical time for cost exigencies uh, and I think partly what we see today is uh, our landscapes that are being formed or being created are based on those economies 
and hence the 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 nature of the conflict that we are seeing but this is just my view so i think it's really about movement and how do you accommodate movement as a as a as a nature of time into but, anything but india is res resisting very well to western no, consumption no no i don't think uh, i don't think it is i don't they don't care in a way no i don't see it that way i i think it's just the systems have become so precise in economies like here in europe mm -hmm. that there is no wiggle room there's no room to move unless yeah. you challenge the system and not to challenge it in, in, in a way but to, but that's something that has to be more an inward uh, uh, exploration more than because the system is always going to be there so I, for me we're always going to be in gravity that's a system yeah you know, that's it has a so when did you decide i'm going to challenge the system i'm not not so much to challenge it that to challenge it in a way that is not in opposition but working with it to give you movement and trajectory like if you use gravity right there mm. are two ways you can use gravity one is that it it's it's a compressive force but the other way is it is also one that is exactly inverse where it allows for movement upwards right because okay. you know like to send a rocket uh, up into space uh, we require you know that's why we have gravity right it you need a you know uh, an exactly equal opposite trajectory mm. so you're using that energy that is being that uh, that is basically a downward movement as a way to actually traject you uh, to move upward so it's using these flows and systems in a way to uh, but you have to find the gap because every system will not have not easy a, right uh, i i won't say it's not easy you have to let's take alchemists and kind of when we talk about not easy you know if you take alchemists in the 14th 15th century here in france right mm. and they were looking for a sliver you know the it, everything has has a gap no matter what even nano you know something that is a nanoparticle has a space within it so if there is space then there is an opportunity to get into the space otherwise you know you know what i mean otherwise it's opaque there is yeah, no space yeah, yeah. there for sure so i think one has to be open to the amount of tolerance tolerance that is accommodated in a space and uh, one thing which is striking in the exhibition is how there's a dialogue or something very close between japanese culture and indian culture sometimes we don't know where it is from it looks like japanese but it's indian I would say it's either. It's neither. For me, it's neither. It's not Japanese or Indian. It's embedded in a sense of movement. The fact that you were able to say that you could feel it's as much French as it is Japanese or Indian. Do you know what I, what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. if you did not feel that, that, because that's when you own it. It's when you feel you own something. So in that. there it so i think the commonality is uh, a sense of movement that is uh, that is embedded in all of it's our dna and it's tapping into the dna but if we think about india and japan we could say it's very different culture and suddenly there's something really common for you Okay, I'm going to put this question back to you based on this question. <laughs> Would you say that affection is exclusive to any culture? The word affection? No, of course not. But you are producing object and a feeling and an aesthetic. I think the feeling is the aesthetic is the feeling or the feeling is the aesthetic. and if that is embedded in one of of a sense of movement that's you know erve said okay we're going to make that because i talked about drawn from earth uh you know nature of ground and he said no we're going to call the show breath of an architect mm. uh, but 
while it also refers to my breath, it also refers to all the makers and all the participants, that is yourself and everyone who comes to visit the show, is as much part of that space. That's what actually makes the space. Mm. Otherwise, these things are just there. You know, they, they lie like a seed in the ground waiting to be tapped into. And, and that's really the, uh, the objective of these things is what we embed into things, you know, like music, right? It's, it's what the musician embeds of herself or himself. In yeah, but at the end of the day, there's something, a materiality, which is a sound. And for you, for example, if someone comes to you and say, I want you to make me a building for my uh, wine. So what do you give first? A drawing, what? So, a maquette? yeah, that maquette drawing, okay, that's all, that's all nomenclature of structure of some kind. Uh, but it's an it because for me, anyone can make a building. It's not so hard to make a building. But to affect, affect the nature of the wine and to influence the wine. Wow. Yeah, for me, that's what's important. Then, that's building a winery. Right? Anyone can make a building. It's not such a big deal. And in, in, in architecture, the way you think about it, you have some kind of master, some people you learn from or some architecture you learn from? I think from, from life's experiences to, of course, you know, architects and, uh, and things that have been built anonymously, also by masters, uh, both contemporary and from the past. Mm -hmm. So it's just drawing from all the resources that are there. But I think importantly, it is also trusting one's intuition and building from there because that's the that's the real work. We intuition. All in tr trusting one's intuition because that's not based on it. It's it's present. It's there, right? And, mm. and once it expresses itself, how do you stay tuned as close as you can to that? what what it was that expressed itself because it's not based on any logical yeah yeah for sure but know? when when did you be how did you begin trusting your intuition for example from some building you saw and suddenly you it's were, not about building it's about what it's about light it's about atmospheric air it's about so where was it first where was your first shock it was not a shock. If I tune in, I keep going back to several spaces that I experienced when I was very young, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, in travels. Like where? This was, uh, for example, Ajanta Elora, which are these rock cut caves, uh, uh, not so far from, from it's about a, a half a day's train ride. Uh, and these were caves that have been cut uh, you know, it was in BC, I think fifth, earlier than that, and then through a period of time. And uh, so that's one, you know, uh, I was in a church in uh, Copenhagen done by P.V. Jensen Clint, uh, you know, so with this, it on the sea, at the beach, you know, on a mountain, uh, it's not specific, it's, uh, but if I, if I, what we do, mm -hmm. we, is, uh, we as in us, you, me, okay. here, is here, uh, is light passes through us, right? We are primarily made of water, right? We're crystalline, mm -hmm. right? So what, what does a crystal do? It refracts light, right? That's the nature of the, the mechanics of, of, you know, light and water when they, they, they come in contact with each other. So I think, uh, so it's not, not just trusting one's intuition, it's about being observant and aware of this phenomenon that is present in, I think, every, every being. And, uh, and how do you, it's more a tuning than trusting. Of course you have, and it's in the tuning that you develop this sense of, what I what we can say trust because that's say yeah okay this it's okay to uh, 
because it's not it's it's something that is your intuitive thought will be different from mine and likewise everyone here in this building right mm. but somewhere there, there there are intersections somewhere there are meeting points and some and it's in those meeting points that we begin to feel a certain commonality right and that commonality for me is the refractive index of light and so another question to try to understand okay uh, what about your childhood where and how was your childhood so i grew up in mumbai uh, ah, in the 60s in the center yeah in, it was uh, it was a uh, not quite center but it was now it has become the, it's been absorbed as the center but my parents were doctors and he was both my parents and he took he started his uh, practice in uh, what was a small fishing area of outside i mean when i say outside maybe 20 minutes not so outside okay uh, mumbai was still smart, you know we were a few million at that time now mm. we're 27 million so in the 60s we were maybe 3 million 4 million at best if i know in the 70s we were about 5 6 million at that time so it was relatively a still a dense city but and and, uh, and it was primarily a, a, a city that grew because of the port you know when we were colonized anyway coming back to your question so i grew up in a in in an area which was quite huh, what's the best way to say it? there were all kinds of different people professionals doctors communists hippies <laughs> uh, so it was uh, it was quite a special place uh, very open uh, artists uh, in, in around your your parents i th i would say around the neighborhood like it and it was quite fluid you mm. know it was that 60s time you know woodstock if you think of woodstock in okay. america so it was a quite a free very open yeah uh, you know there were a lot of people from from different parts of the world to uh, writers uh, and you happen to meet them i happened to have the good fortune to be as a kid uh, be in that space in the same air space you know so i had this amazing experience of you know uh, well known went on to become well known classical indian musicians for example dancers like indian classical dancers my godmother was a indian classical dancer my mother was a indian classical singer so it was quite a i would say a, a energized a very open environment of course very different now nothing nothing of that exists now Okay and also there was a sea the birds yeah this we were it was on the sea uh, because bombay is on the sea uh, but i would say that my was my my learning came from the travels when i was young you know with we, your parents with my parents twice two months a year we would travel east west north south wow and that was a discipline that we and so i think if i if i I'm observant that's where I tune myself to so you know how we kind of there's something and I've noticed this uh, now having spoken you know five six when you're five six seven that period something sem seminal occurs at that moment and that's what becomes the basis of how you know if you tune in that becomes the 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 foundations if you would call it that for mm. whatever one does and i i i've observed this in in a lot of people that that particular moment in time but when i do work i am i i i see it's that light or a certain space that always is present no particular reason but i know from your from your childhood you yeah mean? but it's not a, now how much of that is true or how much of that is mythical one doesn't know But, yeah, but we don't care either. exactly exactly so i could say yes okay maybe it is from my child but it's a very particular kind of space and with a special light with a particular kind of light i don't know if it is special or not but it's very particular like what uh, it glows it's a kind of has a glow to it and you want to recreate it sometimes no, i don't want to recreate it i want to inhabit it 
And your studio in uh, Mumbai is like that, or try to? Uh, I would hope so. I, 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 I would. Uh, in what neighborhood is it? It's in the center of the city, in the old part of the city. So it's a, it's a, I live in a, uh, in what used to be a cotton warehouse, uh, and I'm very lucky to have that kind of space because so, uh, it's a, it's a very close. It's a ground space. Normally in Mumbai, everything is. You yeah. know, going vertical. What, what's the name of the neighborhood? Uh, Baikala. Okay. Baikala, which was the older part of the city. So, you know, often I'm, when people ask me, what's your address in Bombay? I say, I live on the railway tracks in Baikala. <laughs> because it is, on the, it is on the railway tracks. I mean, but the railway is very important in India. Very much, very much. Yeah. Yes, very much. But yes, this is... Uh, You know, silence is material. Light is material. What... But there's no silence in Mumbai. No, I not. I'm not talking about Mumbai. I'm just saying that for me, these are all building materials. Yeah. As much as bricks and steel and glass as one kind of building material, but for me, you know, water and atmospheric air and and light, all of this is uh, material, physical building material. But I notice that you. You mix material and color. It could be the same thing for you. Yeah. Color for me is not something that is applied. It's something that is uh, embedded. Mm, exactly. That's the feeling in this, yeah, in this show it's, too. It's embedded. Uh... And can we speak about the project of winery? Shortly, yes. Uh, the why I mean, the basis of the why, and we, my, my, uh, the, the family was with me in Mumbai uh, early this year in January, and we were talking about, and it's about the alkalinity of the air in the in the in the calves in the Malaysian. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's what would influence the the wine because wine has bacteria; it's living, you know. Oh, yeah, uh, and, for uh, sure. And so the entire foundation, I mean, the basis of the project is that uh, it sits on a giant cistern, like a, a water cistern, where we collect all the water. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and through that, because in that region, it's, it has mist, the mistral air. It's quite dry, not too much rain. So we take this air and we take it deep down into the earth and we move it over, over this water body, this giant cistern. Wow. And then from that, we then move the air. So there's no mechanical device. And uh, so it's interesting. No, I was told, we were told, no truck has come in and no truck left. Whatever we excavated to make the, the project is how we put back. So we just, we displace the earth to form it, to provide the space for whatever they needed to so it's a landscape it's a landscape not a building not a building but you are building are you building a building concretely? we're building a building but the building for me is more it's more landscape than building it's topological wow okay so, you know it is it's and it's interesting because they were saying that it's interesting to see because most of it is ready and uh, even though they've seen the process of it being done it, they they have been saying that it seems it has always been there, but you know it's it's that's not necessarily completely. And and if people who come to visit it, or their friends, or guests, or people who are, who come to visit the, they say exactly the same thing. So it it's the landscape. It's just earth that's been redistributed in in a in a in a in a frame. Okay. So all 100% of the earth that came out, all 100% has gone back in. Yeah. And, and there's uh, no tech, uh, and it's all been ventilated and cooled and heated with a mechanical device that I've been mean, saying if we were 100, I would say 87, 88% of it is just uh, with no machinery. And when, when shall it be ready? By the end of this, uh, October, November is when it will open. But it's kind of moving already. So, for me, what I uh, what for me is interesting in 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 speaking about architecture is that mm -hmm. that these things, these uh, landscapes or these buildings, can 
look after themselves even after we're gone. So for me, that's the, they're living, you know, they're cellular. And probably they were living before you were there, in a way. I yes. Mean, using the... Yeah, the landscape is, is present. It's just, you know, it's just shaping that, uh, like a violin, right? A wood or, you know, when you think of instruments, musical instruments, they, they, they capture a certain sound of, uh, of a space. And what is, last question, what is so, your next dream? Uh, my next dream. <laughs> Would you say wish or dream, or they're both the same? If you want to have a wish, <laughs> oh. I'd like to die gracefully. Wow, but you are still young. Which means that we have to live in that way. <laughs> And what could be graceful? No prejudice. Could you explain? You're absorbed in the landscape. There is, there is no, it's all space. And, and, and uh, there's no division in the space. I think when there is division, there is prejudice. So you want to be part of the space? Mm, yes. I mean, that's what we are anyway. No? Yeah. So we're, we're all space. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.